Welcome to the Rachel Varga Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Varga, double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011 with over 20,000 rejuvenation procedures performed. I'm an international clinical trainer for other physicians and nurses as well, celebrity skin expert, having been featured on some of the world's top proactive aging podcasts and much, much more. Learn more at rachelvarga.ca and enjoy today's episode. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to today's live recording on the Rachel Varga podcast. I'm your host and on the show here we discuss all things body, mind, spirit, energy, optimization to bring forth a higher level of radiance and beauty. And in today's episode we are going to connect with Arthur Menard, the CEO and founder of Lambs EMF protective clothing, which of course I'm rocking the Faraday shirt right now and love their products. And we're going to talk about how I've seen improvements in my sleep and my HRV metrics as we got a lot of fellow biohackers in the audience here. So you are going to really enjoy today's episode. We're going to get into the science of EMF protective clothing, how it works and all of that fun stuff. And be sure to purchase your lambs EMF protective clothing today and use promo code Varga to save. And the link to order and learn more about lambs is in the description of this episode. And thank you so much for joining here on the show. Be sure to subscribe, like, share this episode with a friend and many blessings to you and your loved ones. And if we haven't had the chance of meeting in person for or online for a one-on-one skin and rejuvenation con- skin and rejuvenation consultation, I would love to meet you and use promo code podcast15 for 15% off of your one-on-one with me and register now for spring skin camp. We begin very soon. You can register at springskincamp.com and learn with me all the ways that we can get your skin on point for spring, what to focus on now to protect your skin and get your skin ready for a little bit more exposure and time in the sun. So let me tell you a little bit about today's guest. Arthur Menard is the founder and CEO of LAMS, the health enhancing tech apparel. For over 15 years, Arthur has been obsessed with optimizing his health and wellness while monitoring what he has been putting inside his body. Arthur realized that what he was exposing his body to also had a big impact. Lambs was born to solve this problem and to inspire people just like you to live healthier lives. And I'll add a little bit more vibrancy and radiancy into the mix as well, because protecting ourselves from EMFs does absolutely lend to better blood flow to the periphery and better skin. The science is there is about 20 years of research on this stuff, so it's not all woo. Arthur holds a master's degree in engineering and biology, is a Forbes 30 under 30, and has been featured in publications such as Men's Health, GQ, The New Yorker, and much, much more. Welcome, Arthur. It's great to have you on the show. How are you today? Thanks, Rachel. I'm doing great. How are you? Good, good. It's uh, it's a little bit warmer where you are. I'm more north of you, and you are based in California, correct? That is correct. Figured that uh, once I moved down into the to, to the thousand California part of the the world, I figured that uh, I could not live anywhere else. Uh, uh, where it's not that sunny uh, <laughs> every <laughs> all the time so it's uh yeah it's amazing being here absolutely well thank you so much for making some wonderful clothing about a month and a half ago I was having a really hard time with fatigue I just wasn't really feeling like myself and I had this little niggle to try EMF protective clothing so I've known for a long time that I'm electromagnetic Magnetically hypersensitive. That's why I hop in the Land Rover and I go about three hours into the bush, four by four, and about one or two days a week to give myself a break from electromagnetic radiation. So I would love for you to share what is your background and how did you end up creating the EMF protective brand Lambs? Yeah. Um, I mean, so my background, as you said, I've been very obsessed for a number of years with my health and wellness. And uh, I think this obsession stems from my uh, adult, my, my teenage years, uh, where I started seeing family and friends of family developing the usual 
um, modern diseases associated with the fact that we live longer, which are, uh, you know, cancer, cardiovascular disease, and all of these, and realized very young that, uh, well, I was healthy and that it would be much easier to stay healthy and that the choices that I was making today would have a compounding effect on how likely I, I would be to either stay healthy or start developing um, some of these diseases in the future. And especially um, with regards to the fact that when you look at cancer, for instance, a lot of it is associated with your genetics. Um, but the environmental effect and, and your likelihood of developing cancer, if you're pretty, <clears throat> if you're predisposed, can get much, much lower if you're making the right choices. Uh, and the longer you've been making those choices, the better, right? Um, just like with everything, it's not one uh, conversation over the over your cell phone that is going to give you break, brain cancer, but long term exposure um, will very likely drastically increase your risk if you're um, if you're not being careful. And so, um, started during my teenage year to uh, really dive into this. Always loved biology. Ended up um, and ended up going to college to study engineering and biology with a heavy focus on human health um, and um, and started experimenting um, as early as my teenage years with uh, a lot of different things, to figure out what would be working for me, what would not be working. Um, became uh, very into the quantified self movement um, uh, early on as well. So I've, uh, I've been a very early adopters of everything, tracking all of my health metrics, um, and um, and yeah, that's that's kind of the background and and what led to the creation of LAM. So this passion for uh, what can I do today that will compound into a healthier tomorrow. And my uh, my deep belief is that by living as healthy of a lifestyle as I can, this is how I'm driving happiness for myself because I have the energy to enjoy the day. I have the, and I, I'm fortunate to be healthy as well. And every time I'm sick or enjoy myself, I realize how, uh, how this, um, how being healthy and feeling well is, feels like a given when this is how you feel. Um, and, uh, and whenever you're sick, this is when you realize that money and everything else doesn't really matter as much as as this feeling of like well i'm feeling well and uh it's it's yeah uh so feeling very blessed to be in this world and to be able to make a difference as well with lambs wonderful well you've certainly made a difference in my life that's for sure with uh, wearables and i firmly believe that wearables are really the answer for EMF protection, it's really difficult to turn our homes into a Faraday cage. I know Dave Asprey kind of down the street, he's trying to do that with one of his new homes, but it's really difficult and it's really difficult to clean up the dirty electromagnetics in the home. Not everybody wants to turn their router off at night. So wearing the wearables is really convenient because because you have it on you to protect you and all of that as you go through your daily life without looking like, you know, you're a crazy person in a spacesuit trying to protect yourself from radiation. But I'm curious if you have any personal experience of maybe even being a bit electromagnetically hypersensitive yourself. A number of years ago, I saw on the WHO website that it was postulated 10 years ago that about 15% of the population was considered electromagnetically hypersensitive. And that was of course before 5G and all of that. So I'm just curious if you have a personal story of how protection, personal protection has made you feel better. Um, so I actually have um, a couple of family members that are, uh, who are uh, electrosensitive. I'm not myself, um, so I, I do feel a big difference between wearing lamps and not wearing lamps on my um, general cognition, like how um, how I like the brain fog and potential migraines. Um, but I'm not um, I'm, I'm not unlike some people, if I enter a room where there is Wi-Fi or uh, Wi-Fi right or close by, etc. I'm not um, I'm not feeling it. Um, but um, I am seeing a big difference on my HRV on my sleep. Um, and generally on my 
general cognition, which is fairly hard to measure, granted. Uh, and honestly, it might also be a placebo on my end, but the scientific um, studies are here supporting why this would be as well. So, and at the end of the day, I'll take a placebo as well. Uh, I, <laughs> what I care about is the end result. I'm a huge fan of testing instead of guessing. So the first night I slept in lamb's clothing. So I had the beanie on, the Faraday shirt, the cheeky briefs. By the way, the bottoms that you have for the ladies and the gents are really nice fitting pieces. These It kind of like lamb's clothing feels like thermal wear to me. So being in the Pacific Northwest is awesome. Um, and you can easily layer it and things like that. Uh, but the biggest things I've noticed, 100% sleep. The first night I slept in lambs, I had a 100% sleep score on my eight sleep and then continued to have 98 to 99% sleep scores. And that was the first time I'd been able to do that. Now, the, the number one way that I... Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was about to say, this is probably one of our number one feedback from our customers where they're really impressed about the effect lamps can have on their sleep. And they're always like, how can it have such a such an impact? And it's it's funny diving down, and I'm sure we'll, we will afterwards as to like why lamps can have this impact. Um, but this is one of the things that is absolutely uh, awesome is that by having this effect on sleep, there is this cascade of, of benefits that you're getting from it because sleep is one of our essential processes uh, when it comes to our body recovering and our memory, uh, <clears throat> uh, memory creation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so from, a, from body and mind support, just getting better sleep in general is the best thing we can do for ourselves. Um, so it's always something that we love hearing and seeing with our customers is how uh, big of a difference it can make on their sleep because we're like, well, that's great because it's going to make a big difference on all the rest as well, just just based on that. You got it. And full disclaimer, disclosure to everybody here, what we talk about is not medical advice, it's educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. And also to mention that I purchased these products myself and have done quite a bit of research in the space of electromagnetics. I'm actually writing an academic paper on this very topic. So the biggest change I've seen is sleep, HRV, fatigue, mood, cognition, and mental clarity. I am able to be a lot more focused, so it could very well be related to uh, the sleep optimization, but also maybe just during the day, I'm getting better blood flow to my tissues, organs, and my brain and all that cool stuff. And I've definitely noticed changes with mood. So how does lamb's clothing improve our heart rate variability and just expand for, we got a lot of biohackers in the community here, but maybe just give an overview of what HRV measures and how you think that lamb's is able to improve this metric. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, love to get into this and nerd out a little bit with you, Rachel. Um, so HRV, heart rate variability, uh, what it is first. So HRV measures the average variability between your heartbeats. So when you have a heartbeat that, say, is at 60 BPM, you're actually, your heart is not beating with a one-second interval in between each beat. It might be a second between one of them and then 0.89 second, then one point one three second, then 1.05 seconds, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And this discrepancy between the time in between each um, each beat um, is called the heart rate variability. In general, um, a higher HRV means <clears throat> is associated with a better uh, body recovery, is a, is a good measure of your body stress and recovery. So the higher the HRV compared to your baseline, um, the better recovered you are and the more the less your body is under stress. So your HRV will tend to go down if you have just worked out and you haven't recovered from your workout yet. It's going to go down if you're coming, if you're starting to be sick. Um, it's going to go down um, in situations of high stress. Um, and I'm talking about mental stress here. Um, and um, so why? Uh, so it's currently one of the most used method uh, to measure this uh, level of stress and recovery on, on your body. And a lot of pro athletes are actually using HRV, especially uh, people who are endurance athletes, to um, 
see how hard they can push on a workout on any given day because it gives them good indication of like okay where internally where do i stand so now why um a couple of things for people who will start uh, so how do you measure your hrv um some people may ask so uh, a number of devices do this today uh Uraring does this whoop does that as well eight sleep uh, measures hrv I believe your Apple Watch now will do this too, and probably Fitbit and Garmin uh, will give you access to this data. Um, not sure about the later the, uh, the letters, uh, but uh, it's very easy today to measure, and any uh, device that measures your heart rate, um, in theory, could measure your heart rate variability as well. So um, why? Um, so why? Uh, what is HRV outside of like? The, the physiological aspect and why it doesn't matter. Um, so the reason why a higher HRV is considered to be a sign of better recovery is because HRV is a way to measure your autonomous nervous system balance. And um, the autonomous nervous system is essentially the system that governs all of the subconscious processes of our body that we're not actively controlling with our mind. And um, so this is, we're talking about blood flow. We're talking about, um, we're talking about salivation. We're talking about um, uh, pupil dilatation, uh, dilatation um, uh, bowel movements, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, it's generally, and I'm going to simplify it a little bit, but your autonomous nervous system is comprised of three main branches. And out of those three, um, two are very important. Your parasympathetic nervous system uh, or parasympathetic nervous response and your sympathetic nervous system or response. Um, the way they're more commonly known by most people is uh, rest and digest for parasympathetic nervous system and fight, and fl fight or flight for uh, sympathetic nervous response. So fight and flight is the reaction uh, is when this autonomous nervous is how this autonomous nervous system is going to react when it's under a situation of stress where which would be typically you fighting or fleeing from something back in our hunter gatherers days. Um, and that means that the blood flow is prioritized to go towards muscles. Uh, and towards the brain, um, that your digestion, your skin, uh, a number of other processes that are um, considered accessory to your survival right now are not are being uh, dismissed or are not being prioritized compared to, um, well, how do I run faster? Uh, how do I see better? And how do I escape from this situation or deal with this situation? On the opposite side of the spectrum, rest and digest would be the opposite, which is I am not in a situation of high stress and my body can perform all of the processes that it needs to perform. So uh, more salivation, more digestion, better blood flow towards the, the skin and essentially all your maintenance processes. <clears throat> it's not bad to be in a fight or flight um, um, mode, per se, if you're training or uh, a few times a day or a week, uh, but generally our bodies are made to be in a rest and digest state uh, most of the time um, and to be in a fight or flight state a very limited amount of time. And because of our modern lifestyles of one, living a stressful life, life B, putting a lot of stress on our body from what we're eating from what, how, uh, from our lifestyle generally of having, well, less sleep, of uh, having more stress, of eating poor food, and of being exposed to a lot of envir environmental stressors, be it toxins, um, EMF, um, a lot of exposure to UV, uh, UV rays, et cetera, et cetera. All of this can increase our oxidative stress and generally the, the amount of stress our body is under. And this will push us towards a uh, generally more of a rest and digest response, uh, sorry, fight, fight or flight response over a rest and digest response. The higher our HRV, um, the more balanced our system is and the more in a rest and digest state we are, meaning that our body is better recovering and is better 
doing all of its maintenance processes. So um, how is LAMS able to improve that? As we just said, uh, wireless radiation and UV rays, which are the two things that LAMS block at 99.9%, um, are documented uh, by thousands of studies to increase free radicals and oxidative stress. And this oxidative stress is one of the uh, internal stressors that will trigger this fight or flight mechanism for your body saying, well, something is wrong inside of me, just like with a disease or a virus or bacteria is like, I need to fix it. And therefore I, the, the attention, the attention of the body is going to be focused on fixing the issue that is currently internal over doing, um, its maintenance processes and, and recovering properly, um, as it should. So that's, there is a lot of vulgarization in there. Like I've kind of butchered <laughs> everything to make it more palatable, but this should uh, give a, a good overview of, of what's HRV, why does it matter, and um, and what's happening inside of your body when you have a higher HRV, which is your body is in a rest and digest state or is favorizing this. Yeah, I'll add to that, that some of the research that I've come across in writing a paper on how we can mitigate electromagnetics is actually a study on, on ovaries and blood flow to the ovaries. So when we're talking about other health benefits with wearing products like lamb's clothing, I, I definitely would say that, you know, better blood flow to the ovaries, better blood flow to the liver will have a downstream effect on better hormonal regulation. And some of the other research that I've come across in the paper I'm writing is that electromagnetics dysregulates our autonomic nervous system. So that's why it's really important to protect yourself um, from wireless radiation, all sorts of stuff. But there's also the blood flow component. So when our blood is less sticky, it's behaving Thing. The red blood cells are, are, you know, moving through the bloodstream properly. We're able to carry nutrients and oxygen to the tissues. So the, so the skin, you will have brighter, better, more, more radiant skin when you are more EMF protective. So not all of us can do one or two days a week off grid. We live in cities. We live in a lot of smart cities right now as well. So this is, um, in my opinion, in my personal opinion, I think that EMFs are the biggest health threat of our time. And when, when we're looking at slowing aging, it's never going to be just one thing. It's going to be a cumulative effect of a number of things. So EMF protective clothing is really one of those things. And no, you're not going to get EMF protection by like putting a sticker on your laptop or no. your cell phone. <laughs> you really, in, in my experience, because I have tested your clothing with my EMF reader here, you really have to actually kind of like cocoon yourself to protect your your from from the skin. So I'm really curious, uh, Arthur, what are lambs clothing made of? You said it blocks about 99% of UV radiation and electromagnetic radiation. What is the clothing made of? <clears throat> so um, I'm going to go back to the backstory of the origins of lambs, actually, when we decided to tackle this problem of um, exposure to external stressors, uh, we were looking at two things in particular that we believed our clothing could solve, which was um, electromagnetic radiation and, and UV rays. And uh, well, first, actually, we, we tried to figure out, like, how can we block wireless radiation? Because the, no protection was existing on the market when we got started. Or no real protection, I'll say this. There were, like, a, a few products on the market that we bought, tested, didn't work. You talked about phone stickers. Uh, it's a great example of products that don't work for good reasons. There is no science behind how it would work. So whenever you see something that uses quantum and um, quantum energy to, use, yeah, um, this is not. Anyways, um, so uh, we. Well, uh, I would I would like to add something there that there's a difference between blocking EMFs and there's also a difference between um, creating a more coherent field in different areas. Like I live on a fault line, so do you. There's that too. So I'm really I'm I'm in, I know what you're saying, and I love that you're kind of bringing this out because there's a lot of gimmicks in this space. There is, and it's um it. That was actually a real problem when we got started is um, there was really no way of knowing if a product was active or not. And so we built our entire brand on uh, transparency and the science behind LAMS. So when you go on our website, you can see one, all the science behind the health improvement or 
that you may experience again, uh, not medical advice here, um, but you'll be able to nerd out on the scientific studies and, and the scientific basis on which land was built, but also learn more about the technology and um, the lab tests that we've done, et cetera, et cetera. So going back into the origin story, what we figured out is um, that the best way and, and kind of only way really to block wireless radiation would be to shield them from reaching our body directly. So as you said before, shielding a home is definitely doable, uh, but it's very expensive, number one. Uh, and number two, it only solves the problem when you're inside of your home, unless you're living, um, unless you're living away from most civilization. But if you're in a city, which is my case typically, uh, you're going to be experiencing uh, not just the effect of your Wi-Fi and your cell phone, etc., but you're going to have cell phone towers. You're going to have your neighbor's Wi-Fi. You're going to have all the other Wi-Fis. Speaking uh, of living in a city, do you mind closing that door behind you? Uh, yeah. No <laughs> give, me, just, give me just a second. <laughs> we're just getting a little bit of background noise there. Um, and this is, you know, real life. We don't edit anything on the show here. These are all raw and unedited conversations. And why I think that mitigating EMF and wearing clothing, it's, it's just, con it's more convenient to wear clothing than it is to, you know, ring up your electrician and redo all the electrical circuitry in your home. It's just, it's not really possible to do that. And yes, I will definitely lend to what you just said, Arthur, that it's important that we shield and we kind of like actually shroud and cocoon our bodies because I've tested it with my EMF reader, putting it kind of like half under the shirt and there's still, um, Wi-Fi and EMF is like a soup. It's almost like a fog. Um, it's not always directional with the type of uh, radiation we're exposed to. And I have tested with my EMF reader and put it under the lamb's clothing. And it does definitely bring it down a couple of notches, which is yeah. good. Yeah. And, and it's uh, your EMF reader here is on an exponential as well. Um, so when you see it go down a couple of notches, it's actually usually like 100x at least. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, so yeah, um, living in a city and with... Um, the devices that we have, either we're trying to create an environment which is EMF-free, um, meaning no cell phones, no Wi-Fi, um, and shielding your entire home. For most people, this is not really realistic, and this only will would really last when you're inside of your home. Um, the easiest way really would be just to prevent those EMFs from reaching your body. That also allows to fully use technology. So I'm doing this interview on Wi-Fi right now. I've got a cell phone next to me and um, I'm definitely not advocating for going back to, you know, old times where we didn't have technology. I think there are like amazing use of technologies and my aura connects with Bluetooth when et cetera, et cetera. Like, um, so it's, it's kind of the flip side uh, and it's a double-edged sword, but um, what we're trying to do is, is kind of have our cake and eat it and uh, keep using technology without experiencing the downsides that they can have. So we figured out that um, spacesuits actually were blocking wireless radiation. And so we started looking into the technology that they were using. It's a very simple physical concept, which is called the Faraday cage. Um, the a more technical term would be electromagnetic shielding, but everyone knows what a Faraday cage is. You have one in your microwave as well. Um, and when you're looking at the inside of your microwave, uh, you'll see that there is this grid, it's usually aluminum, in the door of your microwave um, and with little holes. And um, this grid is um, actually in every part of the microwave. And this is what allows to keep the radiation inside of the microwave when you're cooking something. Um, we're using a similar, the same physical principle of electromagnetic shielding by having silver fibers um, that are weaved into the product, uh, into the fabric of each of our products and that are put at 360 degrees in the product, meaning we have this um, special proprietary silver mesh that we've created in our fabric uh, everywhere in our product so that it surrounds as much of the body as possible. 
this uh, silver mesh. Um, so the, the the fabric that we that, that we created is called Wave Stopper, and the way Wave Stopper works is by having this special mesh of silver fibers that is weaved in a very peculiar way. We're able to create very uh, a very fine grid of conductive material. Silver is conductive, which prevents wireless radiation from penetrating them. Um, the the way um, the, the way uh, electromagnetic shielding works, if I had to explain it in more layman, layman's term, is um, well. First, the, the technical aspect of it is that um, electromagnetic shielding is the, using the principle that a wire, wireless radiation cannot penetrate a mesh of conductive fibers if the size of the holes of the mesh is smaller than the wavelength of the radiation. Um, and the easier way to picture this is if you have a fence, you will not be able to go through the fence if the size of the holes of the fence is smaller than your head. Um, if it's a lot bigger, you'd be able to go through. Uh, and the second aspect of this is obviously if the fence is on like three is three feet wide, uh, that's not really going to help. But if the fence is um, three miles long, um, this is a different story. It's going to be a lot more effective at preventing you from entering whichever area uh, is there. And so a similar principle here is you need enough surface to cover um, for uh, with this um, special fabric of ours. So we couldn't put it just like in front of the heart or just in front of your genitals or, um, and that would usually, we, we need enough surface for this uh, shielding effect to, to happen. Um, but it's, uh, so it's silver. Uh, we get a lot of questions as to like why silver and not like another conductive material like copper or um, uh, copper, uh, what, what else are we getting? Um, well, steel, et cetera. Um, and the, the main reason is uh, there are a few reasons. Silver is very, very soft. Um, so we're able to have a garment that is very comfortable and a fabric that is uh, enjoyable to wear, uh, which was the number one goal is to make our products as comfortable and fitting as nicely as possible so that getting lambs is actually an upgrade from most clothing you would have instead of you know having to trade looking good and feeling good with, with like, OK, uh, I'll, I'll wear a piece of armor, but uh, at least it's protecting me. So we're, uh, again, trying to combine the best of both worlds. Um, silver is naturally antimicrobial. Um, so it also is uh, fighting otters uh, and helping your skin um, be a little healthier. And, um, and finally, um, there is no allergic reaction to silver. Uh, so no one in the world is documented to be allergic to silver, whereas copper, steel, etc., can have some uh, allergic reactions. If you ever buy a piece of jewelry, which is supposed to be pure silver, and you get an allergic reaction to it, uh, you can go back to your jewelry store <laughs> because it's not pure silver. Um, and, uh, and finally, it doesn't rust. So all of these were uh, the reasons why we decided on silver. Um, obviously, that's... Uh, makes it a very complicated material to work with, et cetera. But um, we're very happy after. So we had to go through literally hundreds of prototypes to get to the level of, of softness and uh, elasticity, et cetera, that we have with the current fabric. Uh, but we're very happy with the end result. Yeah, I love what you mentioned about um, actually the silver itself being antimicrobial, antibacterial. People that eat colloidal silver or consume it, they end up going kind of like blue, like sort of like smurfy. But I do actually postulate that having more silver actually contacting your skin on your arms, your abdomen and your legs should in in effect, reduce oxidative stress on the tissue itself. So this is actually something that I would love to put forward to you that not only are we cr creating a, a better autonomic nervous system, circulatory environment, better blood flow to our skin and our organs for all sorts of various reasons, Reasons, but also topically on the skin for reducing oxidative stress because pollution, dirt debris from the air, when it sits on the skin, studies show that it actually creates oxidative stress. And that actually leads to accelerated aging, loss of collagen, elastin, hyperpigmentation, and 
all sorts of things. And you mentioned something really interesting. We see this a lot with biohacking technologies. They usually end up having a more commercial um, component or discovery, and then it makes it its way into the consumer market. So on the show here, I've been joking that, you know, the, the Star Trek or astronauts would for sure be wearing this stuff. And now it's available to us. And I think it's really important to start to understand how we can protect ourselves from radiation because pretty much no radiation is good for us. It leads to cellular apoptosis, oxidative stress, accelerated aging. Y'all know this because I've been preaching it from the, mount the mountaintops for the last four audio only episodes. So I can't really share too much of the stuff on YouTube, which is which is a shame. So the in-depth stuff is always on the audio only um, content on the show. Do you have any closing words, Arthur? Um, well, yeah, actually, um, I would say like we've talked about because uh, we've talked about uh, uh, the negative effect of wireless radiation. We've talked a lot about blocking them. Uh, one thing we haven't mentioned, by the way, is, is uh, uh, where the lamps clothing is not only um, protecting from wireless radiation, but also from UV rays. Um, the traditional T-shirt that you would have is usually rated UPF um, UPF um, uh, 5, which means that they block about 80% of UV rays, uh, leaving you with 20% of these UV actually reaching your skin and increasing oxidative stress and having all the damaging effect that we know um, overexposure to UV can have. Um, and so it was very important for us to be uh, UPF 50 plus. So we actually blocked 99.9% .9 of UV A's and UV B with our clothing, um, which allows you to be in the sun with more parts of your skin protected. But uh, now, having said that, I think um, at least what I personally live by when it comes to my health uh, is not forgetting the wellness component of it, um, meaning that a lot of what we're doing and trying to achieve is is obviously getting better health, which leads to better wellness, but that uh, personally, I think it's important to not forget about living as well. And um, what this means is uh, it's it's important to try and filter your water and reduce your exposure to AMF and reduce your exposure to UV pollution, et cetera. Um, it's also important not to start stressing too much about it and being obsessed with it. And just like with everything, it's a balance of making the right choices and making as many of those right choices as we can. Um, so if we're if you're wearing lamps but eating McDonald's every day, it's probably not going to it's it's probably not the, the right mix either. Um, if you're going to be eating magnols every day, no matter what, then you're better off still wearing lambs. Um, but generally speaking, it's the combination of the choices you're going to make and not the one-off that you're going to make someday of like, well, I've eaten a salad once in this week, so I'm probably fine. Um, or, oh, shoot, I just made a phone call with my phone against my ear and not wearing any uh, any NAMs, uh, that's also <laughs> probably not going to kill you. So um, why the reason why we created LAMS is because we're very excited about creating a set it and forget it type of solution where we're just my clothing in, in, in my wardrobe right now is just LAMS. So I get up in the morning, I'm putting on some LAMS. I don't have to think about it. And I actually never think about the wireless radiation or even UV aspect of my life today because I've got this taken care of. Um, so despite running an EMF brand, like I am, I'm actually like hardly ever thinking about EMF in my personal life, because that's it. Like I've, I've created this change and, and it's taken care of. Same for my water. I've got my water filter. I never think about the water pollution. Um, so I'm a big, big fan of this and of also, yeah, remembering to live and not be too stressed and enjoy my life. It might be short. so. Uh, who knows? We better enjoy it. Yes, I love your outlook. And if you are kind of one of those personalities that tends to go really deep down the rabbit hole, just like pull yourself back out. Allow individuals like Arthur and myself to do some of that research for you and then come back and report back on the research and how you can safely integrate protecting yourself without going down the tinfoil hat rabbit hole. 100%. Uh, shout out to... <laughs> One of my clients yesterday on a one-on-one -on -one call, Pamela, she actually lives in altitude and she'll actually go like 12,000 feet into the mountains. 
And she says that when she's outside for like 10 minutes hiking and trying to enjoy her life in the great outdoors where she lives, she gets burned really easily. So I know she'll be listening to this episode. So if you do live in altitude, you are going to be doing some hiking outside. I think that's fantastic. 99.9% blockage of UVA and UVB is pretty amazing. So thank you so much for sharing that as well and the differentiating factors between lambs and um, the blockage there with not only EMFs, but also the UVA, UVB. And yeah, definitely invest in a brand like Lambs. There's a lot of gimmicks out there that are at a lower price point, but they aren't going to be delivering the measurable and testable results. So thank you so much, Arthur, for joining us here on the show. I can't wait to have you back on to talk about some of the uh, new products that you're going to be making in the future and all of that. So I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And thank you, everyone, for joining us here on the Rachel Varga podcast. Be sure to subscribe, like, share this episode. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions, send me a direct email, info at rachelvarga.ca. Use promo code podcast15 to save on your next one-on-one -on -one session with me and join the fun in my next skin camp. And you can also get direct access to purchasing lambs and use promo code Varga and save and you can find all of my favorite biohacking tools over at rachelvarga.ca forward slash favorites have an awesome day arthur and i look forward to connecting with you again soon thanks so much for having me rachel and thanks so much for uh everyone to tune who tuned in <laughs>